So basically, you know, just chuck it out as chuck far as you can. Let her drift. Feed line into it until you're comfortable. We got 53 feet of water. We got a lot of fish showing in the about 40 foot range, okay. which which is which is pretty decent. Uh, we can get down easily 40 feet, and we'll just hang it in front of the face and drift along with the tide and see if we can bang a big one. <laughs> right on. Hey, what the heck? You is? want you want this one? This this fish here is a, <laughs> is a China rockfish, boys. You're this, kidding. This, this is a China rockfish. <laughs> Um, I can't believe what we're catching. <laughs> this fish here, man, is absolutely the prime live rockfish specimen on, <laughs> on the or oriental live fish market. You're kidding. Uh, the China rockfish is the preferred species. It and these guys, they're really good eating, obviously. These are absolutely good. This is not a, a humongous specimen by any means. No, I think we'll it, let him go, but yeah, that, but we want to show everybody that is really, it's really neat. Yeah, you just it's never know what you're going to get down there, <laughs> do you? <laughs> like a grab bag of ocean fishing, you know? It's you an extremely it pretty fish. Oh, is that ever a pretty fish? Yeah, yeah. And, and as you can tell, it's just super horny with spines. Oh, yeah. You got a hook set in there like you would not believe. Well, I felt them. I thought it might be a big Chinook. Well, I'll tell you, with these rockfish, uh, they're always a surprise because they're, they're right down on the bottom. Uh, they live amongst the rocks, and when you hook them, that's where they want to go. Is that right? And eh? if you give them any, any amount of head at all, uh, they'll head right back down in, into the bottom. Uh, they get a fair, bit, a fair bit bigger than this, but they're, they, they're, they're not a species that grows humongous. Yeah. Put this one back, it'll grow a bit bigger, but that's a, a, a very fine specimen of a China rockfish. So what we got here? We have what we have here is a copper rockfish. Very good, very good eating fish. You can see by the oh. by the quills on it. Yeah. That uh, these. Uh, so is there any venom in those spines? Well, I'm not sure if it's actual venom, but when it pokes into you, it drags a whole bunch of other little creepy critters from the salt water in it, and uh, it can uh, yeah. give you a pretty good infection. And uh, they've got quite a bucket mouth on them. Yeah, they're they extremely ever? good eating. Very, yeah. very fine fish and chips. Nice, sweet. White flesh to their... I think I know what we're having for supper tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say hi. Hey, dude. <laughs> That's the guy. <laughs> Your history. All right. There you go. Look at that. Thanks for coming out to play. Look at the hook set on this one. So. Oh, just nothing there. You did a fine, fine job of beaching that one, boys. That's a... Hey, right on. Right. Welcome to On The Technology, and today I've got Martin Pace, who's the marine manager here at Way West Marine and Resort. And Martin, what an awesome area you have here for fly fishing. You know, fly fishing has become so popular over the last few years, not only freshwater, but especially saltwater. And I know Don and I have really enjoyed ourselves here. Is this a great place to come and fish? Yeah, it is indeed. We certainly have uh, noticed the, the changing trend in, in anglers towards fly fishing. It's becoming a very popular spot. And uh, the owners of Way West uh, were we're very f uh, forward thinking uh, a couple of years back to, to decide to build a fleet of fly boats uh, specifically dedicated to the task of, uh, of pursuing salmon and bottom fish and trout in Clockwood Sound, uh, which is indeed one of the premier saltwater fly fishing destinations in BC. Premier because you, you just mentioned the species you can go after, you got the great scenery, but also when you come here, you, know, you got the resort and the boats we've been fishing from are excellent. Now, I know a lot of people haven't been fly fishing on salt water. What kind of expectations should they have if they come here? Well, that will depend upon the season. Uh, early in the season, we're typically fishing uh, for salmon uh, in, in close to shore. And uh, at that time of year, your salmon tend to be a little bit smaller, but they're certainly quite large in numbers. Uh, your fish are running typically two to four pounds, and uh, we, it's, it's not uncommon to hook into, into 15 to 20 fish per fishing session. As the season progresses, uh, the salmon tend to get larger. Uh, we certainly get a much more of an abundance of Chinook as, as the season goes on, particularly over the next couple of weeks. Uh, the, the number of Chinook that we'll be able to access fly fishing will increase almost exponentially in the next 10 days as the major wave of West Coast Vancouver Island Chinook comes down. Of course, we've always got outstanding bottom fish opportunities, if you guys have noticed. Um, we enjoy that pretty well throughout the entire season. Cutthroat fishing tends to be better earlier in the season. Um, as the creeks dry out, as the weather warms up, as we get into midsummer like we're in now, uh, cutthroat fishing can actually be a little bit tougher than it is earlier on. So, awesome. It's a great fisher. Somebody's going to come here, though. They've got to make sure they're prepared for weather. 
for heat. We've had it all. You know, we've been here for four days. And you can't just come for one day also. You gotta make sure you, you take advantage of the area. The area is large enough and there's such a variety of fishing opportunities as you as you fellows have noticed that really to do justice, a person needs two or three days uh, in order to, to really even just scratch the surface. We've got approximately 1,200 square miles of, uh, of fishing area here right. that we can comfortably access with fly rods. Most of it is extremely sheltered and uh, you know, the, the possibilities are endless. Like I say, we're discovering new holes, new ways to fish for salmon, which is equally intriguing with new patterns. And that's one of the real keys to saltwater fly fishing for salmon is that it's still an evolving sport. Technology has caught up yeah, with right. the popularity in the sport in terms of the type of tackle, most specifically some of the specialty lines that are available out there right. that allow anglers to access deeper running fish and still be able to comfortably cast. Right on. Well, thanks a lot. You got a great selection of, of things to do here and uh, a, you say a great facility too. Glad you guys enjoyed it. You better get out there and see if you can get a few more. Yeah, we'll get back to the action. Right on. I bet you had some, my granny called them, black rock fish, I think. It oh, is. Yeah. He's the black nice rock fish guy. Oh, look blackie. how deep it took it too. You got another blackie. That swallowed it. Wanted yeah. it, that little devil. These guys are good eating fish too, right? The black ones? Well, that's a nice size too, eh? Yep, that's yeah. a bigger. That's a decent sized black. Right on. So, we'll let him grow. Let him grow bigger. Let him grow, let him grow. Or as they say for bull trout, no black, put it back. Oh, he's leading it, eh? Fish on. Fish on. Another uh, out. No salmon. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. What is it, black ass? <laughs> it's got, something got a little bit of power to it. Oh, that right? Oh, yeah. Maybe oh, it's not running like a salmon yet, though. Eh? No, it's not a salmon. But it's a heavier fish. Well, it feels like a deer comes eh? now, though. Way deep, yeah. No, it's the color of the crimson rockfish. There we go. He's a lively specimen. <laughs> Kevin, up over here. What do we got? Black one, maybe? Yeah. What the heck you got there? Looks like we hit a school of black rockfish. Yeah. Anything can happen when you're fishing. Ooh. Gee, hit good. Oh, that's guy. a nice big one, eh? Yeah, we well, hit good, too. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's what I wasn't sure of coming up there because he was actually shaking a little line. This is a 10-weight rod I pulled this guy up with. Of course, got the big artillery because you could catch the 30-pound yeah, spring. That's right. we got to have the big big artillery for the springs. That's ah, a, yeah. So that nice, is a nice decent one. rock. Yeah. Nice rockfish. Excellent. Well, that just about does it for a day. We've got a little bit of light left, but uh, not for the camera, so we're going to fish for a little while longer, as we always do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We'd Never. like to thank you for an awesome day of fishing. Yep, you're very you know, welcome. The, the Sea Run Cutthroat, awesome. They're so pretty. They're was fun to go after they them. Are. They are. The bottom fish. Hey, my the favorite. Butterfly. The black rock bass <laughs> or the black rock fish. We didn't get the great. big Chinook, but we really didn't expect to get the big Chinook anyway, but it's always worth trying. We give it a good rub, yep. you know. And you know, we got a piscatorial potpourri of <laughs> bottom fish, so I think we did well. We did. So I, yeah. I'm glad to have you. Thanks, Roy. Come yeah. back again. Excellent. And to you. Thanks a lot, Roy. Yeah, we'll, sure? be, we'll be back for sure. I know we will. Yeah. Guaranteed. You bet. When you come out here, make sure you take care. And conserve waters. You get great fisheries like this one. Awesome. See you next time. Where we take you sport fishing on the fly.